Okay, so just a bit of a recap on cell-mediated immunity. So first of all, phagocytes engulf the pathogen, break it down, and then they place the pathogen's antigens on the cell surface membrane. So that phagocyte is now known as an antigen-presenting cell. Then helper T cells, receptors, will attach to the antigens on the phagocyte. And this activates more T cells to form clones by mitosis. And then T cells will differentiate into cytotoxic killer T cells. These secrete perforin, which perforates or puts holes in the pathogen's membranes. Memory T cells, which stay in the blood and remember the same antigen again. And helper T cells, which attract more phagocytes and enlist the help of B cells. Now looking at antibody-mediated immunity, B cells process the antigens from the pathogen and present them on their surface. So this time it's the B cells rather than the phagocyte that's presenting the antigens on their surface. Then helper T cells attached to the process antigens on the B cells, which activates them. Then the B cells clone by mitosis and differentiate to form plasma B cells, which are the ones that secrete antibodies, or memory B cells, which stay in the blood and remember the same antigen again. Just a bit of a recap on immunity. You've got active immunity. This is when your immune system makes its own antibodies after being stimulated by an antigen. And then there's natural, which is where you become immune after catching a disease, or artificial, which is where you become immune after you've been given a vaccination containing a harmless dose of an antigen. Passive immunity, being given antibodies made by a different organism, your immune system doesn't produce antibodies itself. So this could be natural, when a baby becomes immune due to, its, due to antibodies it gets from its mother, for instance in breast milk. Artificial, when you become immune after being injected with antibodies from someone else, like if you contact tetanus, you can be injected with antibodies against the toxin. So differences between active and passive. Active requires exposure to antigens, but passive doesn't require exposure to antigens. Active immunity, it takes a while for the protection to develop, but passive immunity, protection is immediate because you're getting the actual antibodies. Active immunity, memory cells are produced, but in pass passive immunity, memory cells aren't produced. In active immunity, protection is long-term because the antibody is produced after activation of memory cells in response to complementary antigen being present in the body. With passive, the protection is short-term because the antibodies given are broken down. Each clone of plasma cells produces only one type of antibody. So these are known as monoclonal antibodies. And monoclonal antibodies can be used in medical diagnosis. They can be used in test kits to diagnose diseases or conditions, and these type of tests are quick and reliable. ELISA tests are an example of these type of tests. So monoclonal antibodies are antibodies produced from a single group of genetically identical plasma B cells. So they are identical. Antibodies are specific because their binding sites have a unique tertiary structure that only an antigen with a complementary shape can fit. Monoclonal antibodies can be made to bind to anything, e.g. E an antigen or other substance, and they will only bind to target this molecule. This is useful for treating illnesses and in medical diagnosis. Anti-cancer drugs targeted to cancer cells. Different cells have different surface antigens. Cancer cells have antigens called tumour markers that are not found on normal body cells. Monoclonal antibodies can bind to the tumour markers and you can also attach anti-cancer drugs to the antibodies. When the antibodies bind to the cancer cells, they will bind to the tumour marker, meaning the drug will only accumulate where there are cancer cells. So the side effects of an antibody-based drug are lower. Pregnancy tests. The hormone human chorionic gonadotropin, or HCG, is found in the urine of pregnant women. The application area contains antibodies complementary to the HCG protein, bound to a coloured bead. 
When urine is applied, any HCG will bind to the antibody on the beads, forming an antigen antibody complex. The urine moves up the stick to the test strip, carrying any beads with it. The test strip contains antibodies to HCG that are immobilised. If there is HCG present, the test strip turns blue. Because the immobilised antibody binds to any HCG, concentrating the HCG antibody complex with the blue beads attached. If no HCG is present, the beads pass through the test area without binding and so won't go blue. ELISA test. So ELISA stands, stands for Enzyme Linked Immunosorbent Assay or ELISA. And this allows you to see if a patient has any antibodies to a certain antigen or antigens to a certain antibody. And it can be used in medical diagnosis to test for pathogenic infections or for allergies. In an ELISA test, an antibody is used which has an enzyme attached to it. This enzyme can react with a substrate to produce a colour. This causes a solution in the reaction vessel to change colour. If there's a colour change, it means that the antigen or antibody <coughs> of interest is present in the sample being tested. In some types of ELISA, the quantity of this antigen or antibody can be calculated from the intensity of the colour change. Direct ELISA. A direct ELISA uses a single antibody that is complementary to the antigen you're testing for. Antigens from a patient sample are bound to the inside of a well. A detection antibody with an enzyme attached, complementary to the antigen of interest, is added. If the antigen is present, it will be immobilised and the detection antibody will bind to it. The well is then washed to remove any unbound antibody and the substrate solution is added. If the detection antibody is present, the enzyme reacts with the substrate to give a colour change. Indirect ELISA. So indirect ELISA is different because it uses two different antibodies. An indirect ELISA test can be used to see if the patient possesses antibodies to HIV. <coughs> so HIV antigen is bound to the bottom of a well. A sample of the patient's blood plasma is added to the well. If there are any, are any HIV specific antibodies, they will bind to the HIV antigen at the bottom of the well. The well is then washed to remove unbound antibodies. A secondary antibody that has a specific enzyme attached to it is added to the well. The secondary antibody can bind to the HIV specific antibody, the primary antibody. The well is then washed out to remove any unbound secondary antibody. If there's no primary antibody in the sample, all of the secondary antibody will be washed away because there will be nothing for it to bind to. So, just to recap again, ELISA stands for Enzyme Linked Immunosorbent Assay. ELISA tests can be used to see if a patient has antibodies to a certain antigen. They can be used to test for infections by pathogens or for allergies. In an ELISA test, an enzyme is attached to the antibodies. When this enzyme reacts with a substrate, a coloured product is formed, causing the solution in the reaction vessel to change colour. If a colour change occurs, this shows that the antigen or antibody of interest is present in the sample. There are different types of ELISA tests. You've got direct ELISA tests, which use a single antibody that is complementary to the antigen being tested for. An indirect ELISA test uses two different antibodies known as primary and secondary antibodies. Another type of indirect ELISA test can be used to test whether a patient has specific antigens in their blood plasma. For example, this can be used to test for prostate cancer. The blood plasma of a patient can be tested for the presence of prostate-specific antigens. If the prostate-specific antigens concentration is abnormally high, this suggests the patient has prostate cancer and further tests are done. This indirect ELISA test is very similar to that for HIV. The main difference is that antibodies to PSA are bound to the bottom of the reaction vessel. Pregnancy test. So the wick of the pregnancy test is soaked in urine. The test contains mobile monoclonal antibodies with coloured beads attached. 
These mobile monoclonal antibodies only bind to HCG and this will form a HCG antibody complex. The urine moves up the test strip until it reaches a window. Here, there are immobilised monoclonal antibodies arranged in a line that only binds to the HCG antibody complex. If the woman is pregnant, a coloured line appears. The urine continues up the test strip to the second window. Here, there is a line of immobilised monoclonal antibodies that binds to the mobile monoclonal antibodies. Regardless of whether they are bound to the HCG or not, it simply indicates that the test is working. So that's the control line. So some example questions now. Question one, contrast activity, active and passive immunity. So contrast active and passive immunity. And then the second one, describe and explain the secondary immune response. So the differences between active and passive immunity. So active involves memory cells, passive does not. Active involves production of antibody by plasma cells or memory cells. Passive involves antibody introduced into the body from outside. Active is long term because antibody is produced in the response to the antigen. Passive is short term because the antibody is broken down. Active can take time to develop or work whereas a passive is fast acting. Describe and explain the secondary immune response. Memory B lymphocytes divide rapidly. When they encounter the same antigen again, the plasma cells produce more antibodies faster. What is a monoclonal antibody? Antibodies with the same tertiary structure. The antibody is cloned from a single plasma B cell. How are monoclonal antibodies used in medical treatments? Monoclonal antibodies target or bind to specific antigens on a cancer cell, forming antigen antibody complexes. Monoclonal antibodies carry drugs to specific cells or antigens or receptors, or they block antigens or receptors on the cells. Cells with BRDU in their DNA are detected using an anti-BRDU antibody with an enzyme attached. Use your knowledge of the ELISA test to suggest and explain how the scientists identified the cells that have BRDU in their DNA. Add the antibody, which is the anti-BRDU with the enzyme attached, to cells or DNA, or add cells or DNA to the antibody, anti-BRDU with the enzyme attached. Wash the cells to remove the excess or unattached antibody or wash to remove the excess or unattached cells and then add substrate to cause a colour change.